Welcome to Memorial Cooking Innovations. I'm Tim Scallon, Registered Dietitian. And I'm Manuel Marini, Executive Chef. So, Chef Manny, you've heard me say several times that eating healthy is not so much about uh, deprivation as it is about inclusion. And, you know, what I mean by that is, is it, a, a successful strategy on eating healthy can be focusing on foods that bring health to us rather than on foods that hurt us. True. And so our recipes today are perhaps a good example of that. So what are we cooking today? Well, we're going to do a comfort food, you know, typical comfort, and here no better than chicken fried steak. Ooh, chicken fried steak right here in East Texas. Right here in East Texas. Good but we're going to do the healthier version of it. Okay, Which so is nice. It, it's something that you'll be able to enjoy at home and right. easy to make. Now, Chef Manny, I know there are viewers in our audience that are saying, no way, chicken fried steak healthy? Yeah, it will be. Okay, all right. Okay. And then now then we're, we're going to do a mashed potato, a rosemary garlic mashed potato. Ooh, so that sounds that's good. That's good. And another gonna, comfort food. Another comfort food. And then some fresh green beans. It's the season now, so we're going to... But I got a little thing to it. We're going to spice it up a little bit because we're going to use a little poblano peppers and Ooh. stuff like that. So give it a little traditional stuff. You know, by the time we get through with this meal, we're going to be so comfortable. That's a good idea. Yeah, it is. Okay, all right. Okay, so uh, uh, where are we starting? Well, the recipe calls for some uh, three pounds of B-red potatoes, and these are right. the ones, right? Mm -hmm. So what we want right. to do is we want to... Wash them really, really good. Let them soak them for a little bit because they got a lot of mud and stuff, and then just yeah. rub them real good. Boil your water, pinch okay. of salt, and then once it starts boiling, just drop them slowly. You can also use a spoon and lower them down little by little. So the boiling water doesn't so splash. Boiling. So that's what okay. we did. We started okay. boiling them because it will yeah. take a little longer. Yeah. So while we're making the mashed potatoes, yeah. we can do everything else, and okay. then we'll put it all together at the end. Okay, okay? that sounds good. Another one is the fresh green beans. We have some in the market. So I got some water heating up right now and that only takes a few seconds to blanch off because yeah. we're going to saute them at the end okay? okay all right so we got some water a pinch of salt we're just letting that boil okay so then now we got the chopsticks the cube right. steaks so we're going to go ahead i'm gonna put this right here tim and then i have a plate right here we're going to do uh the recipe is pretty simple we're going to do an egg wash okay, okay. we're okay. going to do an egg wash with a little bit of garlic all right all right, and let me get my bowl and right And some here. people may not know when you say an egg wash, they may not really know what you're talking about. But if, if, you, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll explain that. Yeah, part. definitely, definitely. Uh, so an egg wash basically is where you get something, you take egg and milk and put it together, and you're going to dredge your whatever you're breading in the egg Chicken, wash. Chicken, fish, beef, in this case it's beef. So you're we're going to go ahead and just add a whole egg. Okay, and so, and then after the egg wash, then you're going to put it in the, in the dry mix, right? Right. Okay. And this is, this is not this any is different than traditional chicken fried steak. I mean, our grandmothers did chicken fried steak the same way. Now we just added a little bit of skin milk to it, just to thin okay. it out. So we're just going to whip it. Yep. Okay. Okay. We're going to add a little bit of garlic to All give right. it some flavor. Yep. You know, in this dish, there are about three things that we do thereabouts to make this chicken fried steak healthy. Now the first thing that we do is the obvious thing. We have to shrink that Texas sized chicken fried steak down to a four ounce serving and that way we have more room on our plate to you to put other healthy foods in there. So okay. there's that inclusion thing. We're including some uh, fresh vegetables to go with this uh, lean beef. Okay, I'm gonna put this to the side. Okay. Here we're gonna grab a little bit of the cornmeal. Yep. And a little bit of flour, okay? We're just gonna do it because this is where we're gonna pat it down with. Okay. Okay? All right. Then I got the chopsticks there. Now we're gonna pinch it. When we say a pinch, right? A pinch yeah. of salt. Yeah, I we're always have add, to remind you of that. Yeah. yeah, and you're getting good at it. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm around you. You know, uh, they train dietitians on things like that. Okay, so here we're just gonna pinch, right? Okay. Now, one thing that you asked me was whole black pepper. Yeah. Right? And yeah. I got me one of these black pepper mills. Yeah. And, and I I'm, like it. I like it because you use whole, it'll last you for a good long time, but yeah. you get the freshness. Yeah. Then just your regular table. I like both. This is something that maybe gives a little more flavor to. Now, I'm surprised you're doing your pepper on the meat rather than in your dry mix. Tell me about that. I want it to stick really good. Okay. On the meat. Yeah. So you're going to kind of, you're going to almost down kind of massage bit. that yeah. in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Okay. All right. I got, we got the, by the way, we have the yep. pan going with the yep. little olive oil. Yep, he's going good. It's going good, okay, so we're going to pat this down. Now, we're going to take this. This is the egg wash part. And here's a very important thing. 
Okay. Never do too much egg. You could always add more egg. Again, we're throwing away stuff if, when yeah. we have left over because yeah. we got to discard this, yeah. right? It's right. no good for later. So we're going to go ahead and drench this real good. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and pat it here. I mean, fix this real good. And so we've got a lean cut of round steak here. And, we, and these round steaks are ten, tenderized. Sometimes people call this a cube steak. And, and you can buy a chuck too. You know, cut yeah. it nice and then pound it yourself. You yeah, know but I mean? now your round steak's going to be leaner than that chuck. And okay, so, that's true. So see, that's we're using a lean cut of beef here, and just to give you an example on that, uh, this cut of, of round steak has about 8.9 grams of fat. Let's just say nine grams of fat in this serving. In a uh, in a chicken uh, thigh, there are eight and a half grams of fat. Uh, so about the same. Now, granted, a chicken breast is three grams of fat. Okay, so chicken breast. Now you add the skin back in, that brings it back up to eight grams of fat. So we're in the ballpark with a piece of chicken on this. So now we're just going to brown it on one side, turn it around, and we're going to finish it in the oven. Okay. A pan like this will probably give us about three or four steaks. Yeah. So we want a nice gold. Golden brown, how's that look, okay, Tim? So you're getting, getting a good brown. And so really the objective on, in this step is not really to cook the inside. You really just want to get, Sear a, get, it from the outside, get just, some browning. Right, and then okay. we've got our oven at 350. Okay. Go ahead and we'll stick it in here. Okay. All While right. that is cooking, okay. we continue with the rest of our stuff. Okay, now I want to just say a couple of words about this because this is an important part of how we make a chicken fried steak healthy. We started with the lean cut of beef. Then, instead of deep frying that meat, we, we're getting our browning with just a little bit of uh, oil and then finishing it in the oven. Now, what about if we're not going to add as much fat to this, which we did, and we're putting it in the oven, then we, we got to watch out for... Uh, Overcooking, Overcooking it. Overcooking it, right. Yeah. So we want it to be, this is the best way to do it because mm -hmm. we're going to always open it and leave mm -hmm. the door open for a little bit while mm -hmm. we finish everything up. Yep. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and switch it. The green beans, like I said, in the market, there's, this is the best time for green beans. Mm -hmm. And we have some here, just wash them off because, again, yeah. they're, you know, they come dirty sometimes and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Just take the, the ends of it off. A little okay. pinch of salt. We're just going to drop them in here real quick. Okay. okay. It doesn't right. take that long, okay? So you're just going to blanch these? I'm just going to blanch these. Okay, so we'll, we'll leave them there for a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Very important, you want to keep the green beans really nice and green. What you got to do is, as soon as you get them out, wash them in cold water. Cold water. Or add some ice to it. You want to uh, shock them as fast as possible so they'll stop cooking. Okay. Just like anything out, they yeah. keep cooking a lot. So. Because, you know, in, in, you know, a traditional way to do these green beans would be just to boil them. Okay. But by blanching and then sautéing them in a pan, you're actually preserving some crunch that's going to go very well with these smooth mashed potatoes. So you've got a different texture uh, going on this plate. Beautiful. Okay. okay. All right. So our mashed potatoes, how do we know they're ready? Is when you stick a knife or a skewer, anything mm -hmm. sharp, just stick it right in the middle of the potato and if it slides real easy like that, we're no ready. No resistance, it's ready. Yeah, okay. so we're gonna go ahead and put that there. I got a bowl right here, Tim. Okay. So I'm gonna need your help on this one. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and pull a few potatoes, which is, real, this is real easy. We're gonna go ahead and just, we're gonna mash a few for ourselves, right, Tim? Okay, yeah. And I noticed that you didn't uh, peel these, which I like that because- I like the skin. Well, it's a texture thing, but it's also, uh, you know, the nutrients in a potato, potatoes actually are a very nutritious food. It's almost a complete food. Uh, very high in vitamin C, which people don't realize. Uh, but those skins, a lot of the nutrients are right under the skin of the potato. And so when we peel them, sometimes we're, we're losing some of those nutrients. Now me, I just like the, the texture and the color that the skins add. One thing that if you have a whip like this, it's real yeah. good oh, okay. to just go whip it. If you can do that for real quick. Now, see, I would have, if I would have known I was going to be doing this, I would have brought my old potato masher. And we all have one. But, you know, yeah. if you can't find it right then and there when yeah. you need it, this is really a good way to do it as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a little bit of butter. And I got some fresh rosemary, Tim. Okay. 
You know, you mentioned rosemary, and you're adding rosemary to your potatoes, which, you know, most people wouldn't think of adding rosemary to mashed potatoes, so that's kind of a different twist. It is. It is a nice little twist. And I got some right here, which is very nice. Yeah. Well, and, you know, when we were talking about this recipe, uh, you, you know, your comment was, well, you know, anybody can make mashed potatoes. Let's do something a little different. And so you, you, we, we did the rosemary, and then also... Uh, you said, well, let's add just a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Now, when you're doing uh, mashed potatoes, you know, there's not many restaurants around town that you can get mashed potatoes made from real potatoes. By the way, I got a little bit of skin milk, okay, because yeah. we don't yeah. want the potatoes to be too dry. And okay. then what I want to do, we have a choice. We could add the fresh garlic here and then mix it very well, yeah. or we can add it to the milk as we spread it out, okay? okay. All right. And what I want to do is I want to get some of the rosemary, Yeah. And I'm gonna dice it, and so we can flavor the skin milk, and then we're gonna. So add it you're to distributing the, it in the potatoes. Evenly. Okay. How's that? Okay. Well, like I was saying, you know, most places you don't get fresh potatoes, and if you're using an instant potato, uh, that means that they're gonna have more sodium in them because they've been preserved. Well, when you d use a fresh potato, you've got room for that pinch of salt and that little bit of Parmesan flavor for for, uh, for flavor. And of course that's important to me because we're always working our recipes so that they fit healthy guidelines. You know, we want it to be low in sodium, uh, low in cholesterol, saturated fat, uh, just the right amount of carbohydrate. And the fun thing about this cooking show is that you got to try something new, something different. Well, Blend some flavors together. Well, and speaking of something different, you know, uh, the, other, oh, the other day, uh, I was rummaging in this drawer in the kitchen. Kathy's got in the kitchen uh, a drawer that has, you never know what you're going to find in this drawer. And I ran across this old cheese grater. And so I was looking at it, and okay, it's made in France, and it's got U.S. patent numbers on it, and it looks old. And it made me think of the, the last time I tried to take a hard cheese, and you know these box graters that you grate on? Uh, and you gotta watch your fingers, you don't grate your fingers, and it was real hard. You know, I put some cheese in here and it was so easy to grate, so I brought this for us to use today. Awesome. All right, so. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put the milk, it's nice and right. hot, if you can just go ahead yeah. and, it smells good, doesn't it? It sure does. That rosemary and garlic does give and, a nice aroma. And you know, I wouldn't have thought of, I wouldn't have thought of using rosemary in. Uh, a little black pepper? Yep, gotta have black gotta pepper have it. in mashed potatoes. All right, you want to cut me just a piece of the amount that you want to use on that? I wouldn't have thought of putting rosemary in mashed potatoes, but you know they, that smell works good. It does, it? doesn't it? How about that? Yep. Let's just I'm gonna start that, that right one here. for now. Look how easy this works. And you know, this, this belonged to Kathy's grandmother, and so, you know, it's pretty old. And you know, look how easy it works. It's even, even after all this time. And you can get one of these that's not quite this old uh, at any cooking It's just one of those gadgets uh, that lasts 50 years, doesn't yep, it? Yep, yep. But okay. I am going to add a little pinch okay. of salt, okay? All right. One more pinch. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. Oh, these smell wonderful. They do, don't they? You can smell that. Uh, now, in this case, the, our recipe calls for uh, Parmesan. You could also use another dry cheese. Asiago would be a good one. That's the one that we used today. And the key here is, is it's a dry cheese. Now, all cheeses are relatively high in sodium, so you don't help yourself there. But being dry, it's lower in fat and cholesterol. So that, it's a good one to use on healthy diets. Okay, so we got our mashed potato. We're oh, going to keep it here because it's nice warm. Too, yeah. The green beans are looking good. Okay. I am going to go ahead and slice a little bit of the onions. Okay, so you're going to get you know your what? Let me get my together. pan. Yeah. Yep. Let me get my pan here real quick. Yep. It'll heat up by the time we finish. Yeah. We're going to add a pinch of olive oil. Okay. And in and this, this case... This, is, this one's, by the way, this is a light olive oil. Yeah. Pan. And there's a reason you're using a light in this because... You don't have the flavor of olives in light olive oil, and you don't really want that in a in a dish like this. You don't want olive oil in your green beans or, or your, your chicken, chicken fried steak, steak, or I mean, yeah. uh, one or the other, yeah. not all on everything. So. And, and you could use corn oil. I you mean, can. You, you could use other oils, uh, but you know, we we're going to save that extra virgin olive oil uh, for something that we want that flavor in, salad dressing or a saute that's going to be more. Uh, Mediterranean. 
I think a while back, Tim, we did a, th a show on poblano peppers, right? And it's been a long it's, time. Yeah, and it, you know, once you saute one, we saute clean it really good, okay? Mm -hmm. But once you saute it, it has this original flavor to it. Well, and you know, you've been teaching me about poblano peppers here lately. We had yeah. it the other day. The seeds. Now you ask me, are they hot? They can be hot, okay. and some are, and some aren't. The seeds is what really just. You smell it right now, right? It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a little strong. So, always caution when cleaning them. Just take the seeds off. In, in the Mexican cuisine, they stuff them with beans, cheese, meat, chicken, so anything. It's, it's so, it's the poblano that is the what you make the chili rellenos out of. Or the uh, traditional chili rellenos, yes. It's okay. the poblano peppers, okay? okay. So, we're going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and julienne this. All right. Okay. And then... We're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of red peppers, right? We want yep. a little bit of color to it. And yep. I've got some nice red peppers here. So now just that's, that's take just a, a bell bit. pepper. Just a red bell pepper, huh? Yep. Okay. Nice color, nice rich red color. Yep. Okay. You, you always make this part look so easy. It takes me so much longer to, to get the same kind of cut that you do. But you're getting there, don't you? Well, I'm getting faster. I am. I'll I tell really you, one am. day we're going to switch sides. Uh -oh. You're on this side. I'm on that side. It may I'm have not. to be an hour We'll do show. that. I'll surprise you. <laughs> I'll surprise you one day. Okay, so how are we doing on these green beans? You ready? Yeah, we, I think we are ready. So let me go ahead and pull the green beans. Okay. They look nice. I'm going to go yeah. ahead. And, now, this is hot, so yeah. it's going to sizzle Got a little it. bit, yeah. Tim. All right. From hot to hot. There we go. I'm going to grab a little bit of my onion. Yeah. A so, little bit red pepper. So this isn't the way that our grandmother would have done green beans. They, they wouldn't have sauteed green beans like no, this. No, but look at this. Yeah. Beautiful Nice, color. colorful. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it doesn't take too much butter. It doesn't take too much oil. It's just mm -hmm. lightly because we want to preserve all the natural vitamins and, in it. And gonna, actually, we are going to add a little pinch, pinch a pinch, yeah. and then a little bit of garlic. And you know... Uh, You've, you've actually used saute in two different uh, uh, dishes with this meal, the green beans and you sauteed the, the cube steak. And you know, just as a reminder, saute is get your oil hot and you cook quickly. Quickly, just sear it off. A little black pepper. And really, if you got one of these, it's like yeah, the only, yeah. the ultimate thing. I like that. And guess what? We are oh, gonna no. add a little. Not fennel. No. No, uh, dill. Dill, there yeah, you go. I always get those mixed up, yeah. Okay. So you're going to add some add dill a, a to your green dill. beans. Okay, that's something different. Okay, we're just going to add a little sprig. It, it'll fade okay. off. Here again, <laughs> this is a fresh herb that adds uh, antioxidants. You can grow it at home. Brookshire mm -hmm. has it. Yep. Okay, so yep. you can, it's available always at Brook, Brookshire. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I can smell you that. You smell dill. it? That's so good. The garlic? Yeah. And it goes well with the green beans. But you know, a fresh herb, you remember that the fresh herbs have sometimes up to seven times more active uh, antioxidant ingredients than the dried. Okay. Let me, ready, I'm for go your, ready for I your... Am. Just be okay. always careful when you're grabbing it out of the oven. Now, yep. a lot of times when I do this, people go, you stick the pan in the oven. There are some pans that you can actually stick mm -hmm. in the oven where the handle doesn't even burn or anything like that, but it will yep. be hot, okay? Yeah. So we can see the nice chicken fried steak. Beautiful Look at that. browning there. All right. Okay. So if you pass me a plate, Tim. Yep. What I'm going to do, as soon as I get them out, if I had four of them, we're going to make the gravy. Okay. Okay, Tim? Okay, so, so you yeah, let me get right my... Here. Let me get here, my... Here we go, right here. You got it there? Yep. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Go ahead and... You want him right here? Right there. Perfect. Okay. Now, on this one right here, one thing that you were talking to me the other, the other mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. on the, uh, at the, in the kitchen was that... You did. You try to do this recipe, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. you added red onions, and it made it look like as if it had meat on the gravy. Remember that? Well, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, 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 you know the, what makes this gravy? Okay, first of all, our recipe calls for butter. We start with butter. So, but what makes this gravy healthy is using skim milk instead of whole milk. Okay, and uh, that's you know we at home. I thought, well, let's. Uh, well, I'm just going to try this. And I had some red onion. And you know how you see a sausage gravy sometimes? Well, if you make the same gravy, the same way our recipe uh, has it, and you know you can download our recipes uh, at memorialhealth.org. Uh, if you make this the same way and you dice up some red onion, and before you start the gravy, you've got your butter, and then you're going to saute that onion until it's soft. Ta-da, I got your red oh, onion. Oh, you brought some. I okay. brought you one. Okay. 
Okay, so I just wanted to do that real quick. Well, Remember, it, we have the pan. And the good thing about doing a gravy right after we pull the beef, because yeah. you got the, all the flavors there from uh, the beef. From the beef, yes. So you really don't need beef. Yeah, you know that's I mean? right. That's so, right. I got well, your red onion here, Tim. And so, uh, uh, you know, that's one of the fun things about cooking is sometimes your best recipes are uh, just something that you just thought of. Well, you had some red onion, and uh, wouldn't that add some good flavor to this gravy? Nice flavor and mm -hmm. color. Yeah, okay, and so some texture. We have this right here, Tim. I'm gonna okay. pull this out of your way. Yep. I'm gonna go ahead and put this. You can actually, if you don't mind, go ahead and put the, your- Green beans on there? Your green beans, okay. yeah. This is still a little hot. As you can see, it sizzled. Yep. So, we're gonna add a little bit of flour, just a little bit, because we're making the gravy, right, Tim? Yep. So we just wanna, uh, the flour is gonna help absorb all the, the oil and the fat from the beef, the little fat that was released, and the onions. Okay. Cook that off a little bit so it doesn't taste yeah. floury. And then it, we're gonna add our skin milk. Any, uh, any gravy or sauce that you make, if you're gonna use flour, and this would also be true if you were using cornstarch, another thickener, uh, the recipe always tells you to bring it to a boil and boil it for one minute. <clears throat> and the reason is so that you cook the starch so it doesn't taste pasty. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to let it simmer off. Okay. We got the mashed potatoes here, Tim. Okay. Well, this is hot. This is good. Oh, these are beautiful. Notice how on this plate, uh, you know, you have a, a good serving of beef. Okay, but it's not covering the whole plate. You have room for that beautiful green bean. You've got smooth potatoes. Uh, this is a beautiful. And the good thing about this plate, it is an eight inch plate. Yeah. It's not one of those 12, 14 that you're trying yeah. to fill up, but it yeah. looks very nice, very colorful. Yeah, beautiful. Very fulfilling. Beautiful. Now, we're just going to let this cook off a little bit or thicken up, and then there's our gravy. You know, uh, so one of the things that we've learned on this show is, is I can have gravy on a healthy diet. Well, the answer is yes. Let's use skim milk. Uh, if, you, if you use uh, fresh foods and you're not using instant potatoes or uh, instant other foods, you're making from scratch. You have room for a little bit of salt. Uh, you saw us add some fresh onion in here just for flavor, just for something And different. we got the fresh herbs. We got rosemary mm -hmm. there to give a nice flavor, yep. the garlic on both. You know, there was a recent study on uh, uh, herbs that are used in the Mediterranean diet. They include... Uh, rosemary, thyme, uh, sage, and there were about five of them. But the, the thing is, is these particular herbs are very high in antioxidants. Rosemary was one of them. So to add rosemary to this potato, see here again, we're talking about healthy eating is about inclusion. It's worth uh, dice, taking a few minutes to dice that rosemary adds some flavor to the potatoes, but you're also adding some health to those potatoes. See how it thickened up real nice? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Still. You know, I think ready. I like this better than the traditional gravy. Now notice how he's using a small amount of gravy there. Put a little uh, bit on the mashed potato. What yeah, do you think? Okay. Yeah, it's supposed to be two tablespoons. Okay, so I think you were actually just right. That was right. pretty good. Well, yeah. a tablespoon is three teaspoons, and, and actually and you only used five of those. So, so you, did yeah, you did okay, good. good. You did good. You did good. good. We covered the whole thing. I mean, it's we didn't beautiful. have to overdo ourselves. Yeah, it's beautiful. So, Well, and, and here again, this is another thing, uh, another tip is... Uh, on gravy, you want to use small amounts. You don't want to, it's like a salad dressing. You don't drench your salad in salad dressing. You want to enjoy everything in yeah. the plate, not just one item. Yeah, and you know, I'm eating this plate with my eyes right now. I mean, this is so, you got color, you got texture. I mean, uh, this makes me want to eat this. We're going to garnish it a little bit. There we got go. nice and fresh, Good fresh garnish. Up, just to let Good everybody garnish. know this is what we use. So, I okay. mean, you can't beat that. So, Chef Manny, today, uh, you've taught us that if we uh, choose our foods properly and we prepare them properly, uh, just about enjoy. anything, yeah, and just about anything can go on a healthy diet. We can have a chicken fried steak dinner and still fit our American Heart Association guidelines. And that's our goal. Our goal is to be able to pull an original dish and make it a little healthier. Well, and not only is this healthy, but this would actually fit even in uh, if you were trying to lose weight. You know, I had a viewer, uh, I've had several viewers recently tell me, I've lost this many pounds and I've been watching your show. 
And so what this means is, is that as we start making choices, uh, it's all in the choices that we make every day, those little choices, uh, add that, uh, uh, use the skim milk, uh, choose a lean meat, uh, instead of deep frying, let's saute, finish in the oven. These are all techniques that we can use on other things. it doesn't take a lot of oil. It takes mm -hmm. just a little dab here mm -hmm. and then finish it off. So yeah. there you go. And that looks awesome. Well, we want to thank, uh, our, we want to thank uh, Brookshire's, uh, one of our sponsors. We also want to say thank you to the city of Lufkin for uh, filming and distributing Memorial Cooking Innovations. And especially, we want to thank you, our viewers, for watching us. You know, you, you make this possible, and we really enjoy getting your uh, emails and your feedback. And so keep those coming. If you have questions about food or about nutrition, we'll just send us that email. And uh, we'll see you next month.